and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is ACT Prep. Today we're going to be discussing trig graphs. Now remember, our hope is just to prep you for the ACT test. So we're just going to look at some of the basics of what they look like. I'm going to show you where they came from and know some important features about them that may pop up on some of the questions that you'll see on your next attempt at the ACT. So here's the original three trig functions we've talked about, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, as you're looking at these graphs, these are the basic form of the graph. So if I literally just put y equals sine of x, this right here is what you would see. Now notice it does start at zero in theory. It goes up, it comes back down, and then it just repeats over and over like that. A lot of times they will go from negative pi to pi to show you a full what they call period of this graph. We'll talk more about this in a little bit when I break down the different parts of the graph. But you'll notice our next one here, cosine of x, is very similar. It actually looks almost the same. The only difference is we have shifted it over. So you will notice here that instead of starting at the origin, it's starting up top and then going down and back up. So it actually follows the exact same pattern as sine of x, but the only difference is it's starting point. It's kind of shifted over. Now tangent, on the other hand, is a different beast. It looks a little bit more crazy with these little intervals over and over of the same graph repeating, but also tangent is the least common you're going to see pop up on the ACT, which is why we'll spend most of this video talking about the sine and cosine graph, because really anything we mention about the sine, we can just assume it's going to be the same type of situation for the cosine graph. Now, just so that we can see them for the only time in this video, here are your reciprocal graphs of the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. Now, seeing information about these on the ACT is extremely rare, but it can happen. So I want you to at least see what they look like so you'd be able to answer questions about that. But outside of their general looks, it is very rare that you'll need to know much more about these. So let's go ahead and break down this sine graph. Now, there's a lot of important vocab that goes here, but when looking at this graph, I want you guys to know we're essentially starting with the y-axis right here, and the x-axis is going to be this midline right here. Now, these are just the general vocab that usually go with a sine or cosine graph. First off, I do want to mention is notice that, again, we kind of keep labelings in terms of pi. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds, but that's actually going to be due to where this graph comes from and its relationship to the circle. So a lot of times we base around pi because that's the easiest and clearest way to label a graph dealing with sine or cosine. Now, as mentioned, for the sine graph, we are starting at zero, zero, the origin, where that is the start of what we call our first period. Now, a period is essentially this graph from beginning to end to where it starts repeating again. So one period is the length of the graph from where it starts to end before it starts repeating again. So at this point, we're starting at the zero, zero for the sine graph. You'll see it goes up, it comes down, and it goes back up. But right at this point here, at two pi, it's going to go ahead and start repeating back at this guy here and start going up and back down and the same thing again. Now, we have two other pieces of vocab here, the midline, which is essentially the middle of your graph. So that's going to be like, hey, you go high, you go low, but where's like the reset line in the middle? They refer to that as the midline. And the amplitude is how high or low from that midline your sine graph goes. Now, this is important because we'll talk about how different changes to the equation can actually change your period length and it can change your amplitude and things like that. So we will cover all of that as we go through, but here's a very basic labeling of your sine graph with all of the components and vocab involved. So you might be wondering where the heck does all of this come from? Well, it turns out that it actually is just from a picture of a circle. 
So right now we're looking on the left hand side of the screen at the unit circle. And that's just a circle where the center is at zero with a radius of one. So you'll notice that from here to here, that is just length one. Now, when we look at the sine function, a graph of the sine function, we should be graphing, like we discussed in my last video, the relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse when we are considering the angle about the origin. So in this case right here, we have a small angle and we are looking at the height of Y. And that's actually what's getting graphed because we are dealing with a unit circle, which means the R is always just one because the radius is always one, which means the hypotenuse is always one. So when we are looking at this graph, we're really just looking at the height of Y, our opposite, because opposite divided by one is just your opposite. So if we go ahead and check the Y height here, and that height is what is recorded as we move about the circle. So you'll notice right here, we're sitting at about 45 degrees, and you can see our height for Y isn't as high as it goes, but it's getting there. So let's watch as we move along. So as Y is getting larger and we're moving around the circle, you can see we're hitting the top right now. Over here at our graph, you can see that the actual sine function is forming as we are recording that height over and over. Now, right now we are below the x-axis, which is why we're below the x-axis on our actual sine graph. And as we keep moving across, we've now gone all the way around and now we're going around again, all right? You can see this repeat over and over. So the reason this graph repeats is because really you're just going around the circle over and over again. And the reason it repeats every two pi is because two pi is the equivalent of 360 degrees in a circle. Now, if we switch this to cosine, you would see that the actual same graph is occurring. The same graph is occurring, except the only difference here is when we are looking at the cosine, I am looking through the lens of our adjacent side. So now we're looking at the length of that guy, not that guy. So because at zero degrees, we are starting with this all the way down here, that's actually the height of our graph because the longest that can be is one because it won't get any larger than that with our unit circle only have a radius of one. So as we go around, you will see the exact same type of phenomenon appear that as we go around two times, you will get to see a full two periods of the cosine graph. Now, this is exactly the same as before with the sine graph. The only difference is that we're starting up top and then moving down instead of starting at the origin. All right, so there you have it. We actually went ahead and looked at what the basic graphs for the trig functions look like. Then we talked about labeling the sine function, and a lot of those labels are the exact same for the cosine function. And we got to see how these graphs came to be, that they originated from the unit circle and a triangle that's formed within it. Now, I really, really want to go about showing you guys how changing the equation of sine or cosine affects the graph, but I feel like we're running out of time today, so please go ahead and watch my next video as well, and in that video, I'm gonna break down how you go about changing the graph of sine and cosine based on changing the equation of the two of them. So remember guys, if you liked what you saw in this video, go ahead and click the like button below to let me know. And also if you wanna keep getting videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to see my new weekly videos. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni and this has been your ACT Prep.